So the machining you're watching right now can actually be broken down into two different modes. One is synchronized machining, and the other is superimposed machining. Now, what does this all mean? So to make this a little bit of an easier concept, let's just imagine you're on a bus. Now the bus is moving forward, but you're sitting down on that bus. And as long as you don't get up and move and you stay in one spot, you are synchronized to that bus. However, when you get up on that bus and you start moving around, you are now superimposed to that bus. You're free to move around on the bus, but you are still going where the bus is going no matter what. So let's start by talking about synchronization. Now, when you watched the double end mill come up and make that weird, evil knife looking thing, that was synchronization. Nothing was superimposed. So what does that actually look like? Well, if you look at our screen here, you can see. So it's important to note here that everything that you're watching is actually following one program. There are three separate groups of controllable axes, but once I synchronize them together, they're all just gonna be on that bus like passengers along for the ride. So in order to do that, we're gonna need to fire M342 and head one and head two. This will sync X2 to X1. Now, the next thing we need to do is tell the Ys to move together, but we need to tell them to move opposite because if we had them move exactly the same as each other, they'd go up and in and be pretty bad. So we need them to go opposite like this and then fly in across the material so they don't absolutely destroy the end mills. So after we mill a little bit, you'll notice that the end mills come up and the sub spindle comes on and grabs the part. And at that point, I fire more sync codes. You'll see right here, I sync Z4 to Z1, and I sync C4 to C1. Then, when you watch those two end mills come back down and mill the rest of the part, all of that is being controlled from program one. All of those axes, everything you see moving, which is eight axes in total, is all following program one. They're just passengers on program one's bus. And that is how the evil knife weird crazy thing works. So next up is gonna be superimposed cutting. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna start with the double turning example. And when you look at the program immediately, and when you look at the program immediately, and when you look at the program immediately, you'll see it's a lot more simple. But you also notice a difference. So just like the synchronized cutting, we're gonna fire an M code. But we only have to fire one because all we need to do is have Z2 follow Z1, but it's allowed to move around. So there's no need to synchronize all the other axes because they're gonna do their own thing. And what you'll notice is, is I fed the gang tool a little bit faster than the turret tool. And this is why when you watch that cut, you'll slowly notice the turret is getting further and further behind. And when they get done, it has a little bit of catching up to do. And that's fine. I can program whatever I want that turret to do while head one's doing its own thing. You'll also notice with superimposed cutting, there will actually be code on both channels. If this was just synchronized, this wouldn't have anything in it. So that is kind of really how that works with the double turning. Let's go on to the angled milling helical interpolation thing. Okay, so for the next one, the double angle mill while one program I wrote, what we did to make that one make a little bit more sense is we actually ran one program without the other. It's actually pretty cool, right? Because when you watch it do the helical interpolation, you can see the turret in the background following it. And why that is, is because the turret doesn't actually think it's moving. If you tell a tool in a program while superimposed to wrap it to a position and you don't program any code or you don't move it, it will move around because it's maintaining that coordinate point. So let's just say it's X, Y, Z of zero, right? Just the front center of the part. If I send the turret to that point and then do threading or anything, the turret's gonna stay on that point. It's moving, but the coordinates won't move on the program. It's actually pretty cool. But when I run just the angled milling, you can see it's just milling at an angle. It's just milling a flat. But then when you combine them, that's when it looks really crazy. It's actually maintaining tool center point at an angle while being superimposed from Z2 to Z1. It's pretty cool. So the next one, let's go and take a look at our double threading superimposed program. It is actually pretty neat. So double threading superimposed cutting. Okay, how does that work? It's actually really simple. You'll watch the turret threading is actually following wherever the main goes. And it isn't some weird macro doing this. It's actually just G78 threading cycles. And if you don't know what a G78 threading cycle is, well, we actually just released the Swiss Academy where I go over it in quite great detail. So after this, go watch that. 
Also, like, subscribe, hit the notifications bell. Anywho, so after we superimpose our axes together, you can see it is, it's just two basic threading cycles. Nothing crazy going on there, it's very simple programming. The only thing you might wanna watch out for is if you tell Z1 to retract really far, the turret is going to follow it probably right into that guy bushing, so be very careful when doing stuff like this. But again, as you can see, the code is very simple. And that is actually how all of the superimposed cutting and synchronized cutting works that you have watched in this video so far. That's it, it's not much to it. Now you can do my job. Tornos for giving me one of the best CNC machines on the entire planet to play with and do all these weird things. It is a very cool job. Thank you. Now, for anyone else watching, I have one question, and that is, do you want to see me put this in a mill and actually torture test it and see if it actually can cut anything? Well, to be honest, I don't think you have a choice because I'm probably going to go do that right after we film this video. So yeah, thank you so much for watching. And also check out the Swiss Academy. I put a lot of work into it. It's like over 100 episodes already. It is really a lot of information. So don't forget to check that out. SwissMachiningAcademy.com. See ya. Double angle mill while. Where do I come up with these names? I, like sometimes that is my brain. I don't get it. Like why did I call it Femoral Bionic Nail? Boy, why did I do that? I don't get why I do anything that I do, honestly. I'm really like on autopilot.